So what sort of things are we printing? This is a printed silver line. It's conductive, continuous, it's consistent. This line is 60 microns wide and 0.8 microns high. We are looking at this as a precursor to develop in electrical circuits. Where might we use this? This shows a silver grid printed onto a PDOT uh, coated substrate. When we're ma manufacturing the wide area lightings, one of the issue is, is that you need a transparent conductor. Now, most of the transparent conductors are either ITO, which is brittle and not very flexible, or you have PDOT, PSS, which is not excessively transparent, but equally it's not very conductive either. So in order that you end up with an even lighting across a 600 millimeter square tile, you have to enhance the conductivity of the, uh, of the P dot by printing a silver grid. And this one shows a silver grid we printed earlier uh, last year as a way of enhancing the conductivity of P dot for wide area lighting. One of the advantages that Flexo offers compared to other processes is that we can re regulate the height of the lines by controlling the analox volumes. If you increase the analox volume, then the tendency is to increase the line, th line height, but not to increase the line thickness. Therefore, we almost have independent control of width and height. Therefore, we can control the resistivity of the lines. We have to pay attention to detail. If you look at this, this is the effect of printing speed. We're running at between 31 and 122 meters per minute. As we've increased in speed, so the film thickness has dropped by more than half, especially at the large volume analog sizes. So therefore, setting the press up is essential to decide what speed you're going to print at, because that's the speed at which you need to set the press up. When you're printing uh, electronics, you need to print fine lines, parallel lines to enable you to take circuits around the object that you're printing or the packaging that you're printing. The small inset in the bottom right hand corner shows a white light interferometry uh, picture of the three dimensional process of a fine line. If we looked at the two uh, prints that we have here, one would almost certainly jump to the conclusion that the digital print produced a far better uh, line than the conventional print. However, this is slightly um, uh, erroneous because what we really need to do is measure the width of the line on the plate, which is shown in the, in the, on the bottom axis in this graph, and compare it to the printed line width. You can see from this that actually the conventional plate and the digital plate both produce similar line widths uh, when they're corrected for the width of the line on the plate itself. The gain in line width is quite significant in that the line width printed is approximately two to two and a quarter times the plate size. We are now printing down regularly at 70 microns and down to 35 microns. So this is results from an earlier evaluation test. The effect of pressure is quite significant. The diagram on the left shows a uh, minimum engagement print prints. The numbers that you see, 50 micron lines and 50 micron uh, gaps for the triangles on the right, on the left, and 50 micron lines and 75 micron gaps for the triangle on, on the right in each image. At the lower pressure, we have a clean print. At the higher pressure, the lines, particularly those with the 50 micron gap, are starting to merge together and are no longer suitable as functional uh, inks. There are two points with that. Firstly, that the gap between the, the plate and the, the, and the lines on the plate are squeezing together as the pressure is increased. But also, if you look at the white light image in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, 
on the very tight corners, which you have to do to feed the, the uh, electrons around uh, corners in the, um, in the print, the tight corner is rounded on the outside edge, but still has a very steep side. But it has a slope on the inside edge. So as you increase the pressure, that more and more of that slope comes into contact. And you can see in each, particularly in the, in the higher pressure print on the right, that this slope is forcing ink to fill in the gaps between the two lines on the corner. So there's quite, still quite a lot of work to be done on Flexo, and we're still working on it uh, here in Swansea. One of the interesting things is developing novel plate technology. If we can improve the ink release from the surface of the plate, we can get better ink transfer for fine, fine features, um, and we can get higher thickness for the same fine lines. Because if you're looking at something like the wide area lighting, you are concerned to ensure that you have the thinnest possible lines, but still have them high enough to ensure that they are as conductive as you need them. One of the issues with the, uh, the, the profile of the line on the plate can be seen in the, in the image in the top right corner, which is a white light interferometry image of a line printed onto a smooth substrate. It looks like we've been trying to print two lines, but in fact it's only one. It's because the top of the, uh, the profile of the line was curved, instead of producing a single line, the curve meant that the ink was forced to the side as the plate was printed. So this is not really a satisfactory result. What you need is the sharper top profiles, which we show in the middle. The slightly curved profile, which is in the center blue image, has been moved to become a much sharper square topped profile. The effect of this is that we end up with a single line which is very well defined and quite closely uh, akin to the width on the plate. In producing this sort of image, some people have been using square laser beams. Whereas this is fine with lines in the direction of print and orthogonal to the direction of print, when we print uh, diagonal lines, you end up with a pixelated image along the edge. And when this is printed, you end up with the line filling in these pixelated images, and you end up with a wider, a wider width of diagonal line than you have of the uh, horizontal and vertical lines. So actually paying attention to detail as to how the plates are, move, are produced are quite critical in terms of achieving a good performance. Of course, quite critical in, in all production, particularly, say, of semiconductors, is the gaps. You print down two conductors, you leave a gap because you want to put a semiconducting material between them. When we actually start looking at the plate geometries in the, um, on the plate, you can see that there is actually some quite significant shape effects on the edge of the, of the gaps. Most significant is this raised lip on each side of the gap itself. Uh, there is a difference between the nominal gap width, normally uh, W1, which is the width at the height of the plate, compared to the gap between the, the, um, the lips, W2. The other critical thing is the actual depths, which is from the edge of the lips down to the, down to the depth of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the recess. Under normal inking conditions, these slightly raised edges tend to hold back the ink so that the gap that you get is W2, which may not be as fine as you wish. However, it does give you very, um, very accurate uh, gap geometries. For the same, there is a difference here between digital and conventional plates. Conventional plates tend to give a much greater depth of, uh, of groove in the plate compared to um, digital plates. In this diagram, across the bottom is the actual gap width in microns, as measured with the white light, compared to the actual gap depth. And for a smaller gap, or say for a gap of 55 microns, the conventional plate produces a 22 micron depth uh, groove, whereas the uh, 
um, digital plate only produces a 10 micron gap. The critical thing for that is if you're trying to print a gap, the gap has got to be there or else you can't, or else when you put your semiconductor down, it's shorted out. The other issue is a function of these uh, lips on the edge of the plate, that when we actually print these gaps, while our gap width on the plate at the height of the surface of the plate is quite narrow, say 40 or 60 microns, they actually print up as 120 to 160 micron gaps. Why is this critical? Well, if you're printing semiconductors and you put a semiconductor material down, its performance is dependent on its ability of the electrons to move across the gap. Polymer electronic materials tend not to have very mobile electrons. And if you, the, if you put them on a very wide gap, then the performance of the, um, of the semiconductor deteriorates significantly.